Hey guys, this is Anime Ball Z here, and today we are going to be doing the third part of what if Naruto was a Fox Age. This part took a while because the thoughts of part 2 was pretty bad, it was pretty draining recording it. But I do believe it will be different this time, so today I will be doing the third part. So without further ado, let's get into the video. Slick talker since a jet. When it's time, all the time, oh, yeah. Look at the way that I move, swag. Disrespectful and I'm rude, okay? I had cocaine in the school. Naruto trains hard with Jiraiya, and actually he trains with Kiba, but Kiba doesn't really want to learn Fox Age mode. On the other hand, Kurama is very reluctant to do it because he only wanted to teach Naruto so Naruto could eventually break the seal and he also believes it will take much longer with Kiba. Naruto and Kiba return and the first thing people notice is how tall Naruto has become. Naruto is happy to have returned but he is still sad that Sasuke is gone. The introduction to everyone goes pretty much the same so let's go to the bell test. Naruto waits for Sakura to run in as he attains perfect Fox Age mode. He stands firm, then jumps right into the battle. Naruto creates a Rasengan with the Shadow Clone and zooms right at Kakashi. To Sakura, Naruto looks like a blur, but for Kakashi, he looks normal because of his Sharingan. Kakashi dodges the incoming attack just by stepping to the side, but Naruto easily follows. Kakashi is slightly pushed from the aura of the Sage Mode, however, pushing him right into Naruto's trap. Naruto poofs away, then Naruto zooms right in front of Kakashi and has an easy shot. Kakashi goes flying through a tree and through another one. Naruto weaves several hand signs and reveals 10 shadow clones. Naruto and the shadow clones all run at Kakashi and begin a huge hand to hand fight. I'm sorry, Naruto might be strong in this what if, like really strong, but Naruto still can't beat him that much in a hand to hand fight. Naruto jumps away and controls his chakra to his hands. He grows his new Odama Rasengan then looks up. He creates a huge gush of wind that continuously blows as he creates a Rasengan. Naruto knows that if he goes head on right now, he'll miss, so he makes sure to be as quick as he possibly can. Naruto zooms with insane speed and in an instant he is right next to Kakashi. Kakashi tracks the whole thing but Naruto didn't actually try to hit him first try. Naruto throws a punch with his other arm and slightly misses, his Senjutsu aura still hits Kakashi the other way, right where he can land a perfect hit. Naruto smiles and slams the Odama Rasengan right into Kakashi that sends him flying, creating a big shockwave from the impact. Naruto then says to Sakura, look, you have some really good strength, we're going to need that. You run in and slam the ground, making an uneasy surface to battle in. Because it's quaking at that point, I'll do my part and hopefully something will happen. Naruto opens his eyes and his arms start to get to work as he starts the creation of his new spin-off technique. Sakura does her work and creates an uneasy surface too. Naruto knows Kakashi won't be in there for long at all and sees him instantly jump out of the crack floor. Sakura is confused on how Naruto is going to use this. Several shadow clones come from below the cracked floor and surprises Kakashi but he obviously has no problem with it. Kakashi blocks and knocks them away to destroy them. Naruto then opens his hand behind all of the clones just in front of Sakura with his new jutsu. The Sage Rasengan. This isn't really the full thing, as we get into the story, he'll actually use the complete jutsu. Just wait. This Rasengan is not blue but blazing orange with a white center like the normal Rasengan and has a Senjutsu aura of its own, so if it misses a little bit, it will still hit the opponent. Naruto zooms across the ruins and the clones disappear. Naruto is going extremely fast, and when he is right next to Kakashi, the Rasengan has already hit him. Kakashi goes flying with a big orange explosion. Kakashi goes is flying away, the Naruto and Sakura follow him. Naruto has already arrived right next to him and he grabs a bell as he is still flying away. Sakura catches up and when Kakashi slams into a tree, he gets an extremely powerful cherry blossom impact to the stomach. The floor cracks and Kakashi shows that he really is in pain. Sakura quickly grabs a bell and Naruto's sage mode fades. Kakashi smiles and says, you two are way too strong, way too fast. Naruto, when did you get so smart and strategic? Naruto says, Jiraiya, but mainly the Nine Tails, we cooperate in battle. Kakashi gets up and says, Wow, you guys really have developed your ninja skills. Naruto's Fox Age fades and he says, Thank you. Everything of the reunion with everyone else happens the same with Naruto finding out he's the only Chunin left, but Naruto doesn't really care because he knows his strength is at a good level right now. 
Team Kakashi eventually learned about the attack on Kankuro like in the series and Naruto is willing to use all of his powers to help. Team Guy and Team Kakashi are still assigned to the mission and Chio is still helping them. Naruto and Kakashi are set against Itachi. Naruto smiles and he closes his eyes. Kakashi keeps Itachi occupied, which isn't a particularly easy thing to do, but since it's a disguised person, it's going to be much easier for him, but not a breeze. Naruto is now in perfect sage mode, and Naruto opens his eyes to show crimson red eyes. His hair turns a pure white, and he zooms right at a disguised Itachi. A gush of wind was released when he lifted his feet off of the ground. This is to describe how strong Naruto has actually become. Naruto continues with a barrage of attacks of Taijutsu, then he uses multi-shadow clone Jutsu. This Itachi has no real difficulty destroying all of the clones, since Naruto isn't actually going 100%, but only testing his abilities. Naruto already knows of his eyes and has been using shadow clones to keep Itachi's eyes off of him as much as he possibly can. Naruto then takes a huge step back, then sees the Phoenix Flower Jutsu in full effect. Naruto runs to the side and dodges all of the fire. Naruto says, I have a technique, Kakashi, but I'll need everything we have. Kakashi says, I guess I'll go all out then. Kakashi zooms right at Itachi and keeps him occupied with constant attacking. Kakashi kicks Itachi back, then creates the Raikiri. He pulls down his mask and his Sharingan appears. Kakashi runs right at Itachi with full speed, but he still misses Itachi. Kakashi's Raikiri fades and he gets kicked into the ground. Kakashi screams, but then turns and shoots several Shuriken into the air. Itachi dodges all of them, but then four Shadow Clones of Naruto appear in the air. Two of the clones slingshot the other two down to Itachi. Itachi dodges one, but then gets pummeled by another. Itachi slams into the ground, then all of the Shadow Clones just disappear. Naruto then creates a Sage's Rasengan and zooms right at Itachi at full speed. An orange-like fox silhouette appears around his arm like the Dragon Fist. Then he slams a Rasengan right into Itachi. This Itachi goes flying, then the orange silhouette fox fades into nothing. The Itachi slams into the floor and his disguise is removed, revealing a whole different person. Naruto is lucky he brought out his trump card because if that was a real Itachi, the battle would have likely ended a whole different way. The stuff of the four seals and the clones of each other happens pretty much the same because this is the team guy side of the arc. When Kakashi, Naruto, Chio, and Sakura all discover Deidara and Sasori, Naruto still falls into a big rage. Naruto's eyes go crimson red with slip pupils and he gains access to the one tail chakra cloak. In this form, Naruto has much, much more control over it, but he still doesn't have a lot of control. But he's still basically himself, but he's just more angry and ferocious. Deidara sees Naruto's newfound speed and knows he has to make his exit. Naruto runs right at him and punches him extremely hard. Deidara flies right through a tree, but this is nowhere near enough to take him out. Deidara jumps onto a clay bird and flies off. Naruto's Nine Tails cloak fades, but then he zooms right at Deidara, then Kakashi follows and shows his Mangekyo Sharingan. Sakura and Chio both fight Sasori as usual. Naruto left the Shadow Clone behind there, away from the fight with Sasori, but close. Naruto runs right at Deidara, then suddenly his hair goes white and then his eyes go crimson red. Naruto instantly increases in speed and goes faster than Kakashi. Kakashi isn't actually going full speed, but he is instead trying to aim and focus on Deidara. Deidara still gets an arm demolished from Kakashi's Mangekyo Sharingan. Naruto goes 100% and jumps up at full speed. He creates a Rasengan mid-flight, then he slams it right into the clay bird. The clay bird explodes and Naruto grabs Gara's lifeless body. He looks down and assumes Gara's dead. Naruto turns to the side and five other Shadow Clones come from the side of Deidara to attack him. Deidara is clearly occupied by these Shadow Clones and all of Team Kakashi and Team Guy arrive at the scene. Naruto creates a blazing orange Rasengan and then an orange fox spirit appears around his arm. The fox barks then Naruto launches off of his feet. Naruto in a split second is right near to Deidara. Deidara looks down and gets hit with a Rasengan, engulfed in a fox spirit, which is biting him. Deidara goes flying and goes through several trees, leaving them to fall to the ground. Naruto sighs and looks up to see Deidara expanding rapidly. Naruto shouts to everyone, RUN! 
Naruto zooms, grabs Gara's body, then the rest of them run for their lives. Naruto zooms ahead and he lays Gara's body down in a field. This actually happens after the explosion reaches its maximum size, by the way. Sakura analyzes Gara and comes to the conclusion that he's actually dead. Chio tries to use her reincarnation technique by using Naruto's own chakra. Chio revives Gara at the cost of her own life. Dodoro is still alive and he finds his right arm after rummaging around for it. He gets encountered by Zetsu and Toby as usual and the same stuff happens between them. Gara pays his respects to the Konoha ninja and they make their exit back to the Hidden Leaf Village. Kagashi is still held by Guy because of his overuse of the Mangekyo Sharingan. So that will conclude the third part of What If Naruto Was A Fox Age. If you liked this video then like and comment what you liked about it or something that I should improve on for the next part. If you really like this What If then you can subscribe and put on post notifications to be told when the next part of this What If will be made with great accuracy. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.